Hi, Becky from Lessons by the Lake. Today I want to talk to you about Math Center Management. So I have a few key strategies I've learned to have smooth, successful centers that I want to share with you. So one of them is interactive modeling. So this is a responsive classroom strategy that I've talked about in my reading centers also, but it's a way that you are showing the students exactly how you expect them to act. It's talking about what your expectations look like, feel like, and sound like. So for interactive modeling, for each of my three math stations, we model what it looks like. So I go through the process of sitting at a desk, going to the station, getting whatever materials I need, going back to my area and getting started. And students talk about what they notice as I'm doing that. So it's a process that they're observing me do it and then they're practicing it themselves and they're noticing what worked and what doesn't work. They're noticing that they're not speaking as they're walking, how to carry their manipulatives. You also can do what it shouldn't look like. That depends on the personality of your class. Sometimes that can get a little silly and throw you off the track of what your intention is. But interactive modeling is a really great way to teach them those routines and expectations. I'm gonna put a link in the description to where I talk some more about interactive modeling on my blog if you wanna know more about it and wanna use that strategy. So my other favorite tip that I use in my reading centers as well is a call and response, it's waterfall. So when you say waterfall, the students go shh, and it's a way for them to know that they need to bring the volume level down. Even the process of just going shh, it calms them down and it recenters them. It's also really easy when you're sitting with a group of students to just look up and say waterfall. You're not getting trying to stop them and get their attention. You're not stopping what you're doing. You're just quickly saying waterfall. They know the response and they know that that means they need to quiet down and calm down a little bit. So I love using that call and response during centers and stations. It works really, really well. Another strategy I use are these beads. So after our whole group lesson, I like to give out these beads to three students. So I look for people who have been role models during our whole group lesson, paying attention, actively participating, and I can just tell that they're ready to be their best, best math learners that day. So they get the beads, to be our leaders and they get to be the helpers. So when I'm with a group, we have an ask three before me policy, but the beads dictates which three students they should ask. So I also am getting to pick students that I know will be helpful with technology issues, that I know will be able to help students solve those problems that they're gonna have. So it's a great way to promote leadership in our classroom and to help students help each other and solve those problems while I'm working with my group so I don't have to stop and take time away from that. So they know that while they're working, if they need help with something academic, they should circle it and raise their hand. And then I just kind of nod and acknowledge that they need help. And if I have a chance, I go talk to them. If not, we look at it later together. But if it's something like that they can't find a supply or they need help logging on, they know that they can ask the students with the beads about that first before they come to me. So another tip I have is to keep, if you do any type of games or manipulative stations, keep everything in a tub. So these are our math tubs. When students are in math with a friend where they get to play a game or do an interactive activity, everything they need is in here. Blocks, dry erase markers, the game boards, absolutely everything. So this makes it really easy when it's time for them to go get their activity then walk over to the shelf, pull off the whole math tub, take it to where they're going to sit. Then when it's time to clean up, really easy, put everything back in and put it back. So it really helps contain those materials and make sure they're not getting lost. It also makes for quick transitions if students are able to take out this tub and put it away quickly without having to go several places and think about what they need. Everything they could possibly need is right here for them. It's also easy for you to every week or every other week, just open up all the tubs, switch out all the games, and you're ready to go. So another thing I do is that I have these tubs for math with a friend, math by myself, students are doing a worksheet. I keep them in different areas. When I tell students to switch and go get their materials for the next station, I don't want them all rushing to the same area and being in a big cluster and not being able to get through. 
So I have them close by, but in two separate spaces so that they're able to line up and efficiently get their materials without crowding around each other and all needing to get to the same space. Also, when it's right before it's time to switch, I say two minute warning. So that means Mac with a friend, they know they need to clean up because we want to make sure they have enough time to put everything back in the tub the way they found it. We want the manipulatives in the containers. We want the caps on the markers. We want it to look nice. We don't want it all disheveled and a mess in the tub. We do a lot of talking about and practicing that they need to keep the tubs looking how I set them up because each group deserves to go come to that, to have everything put together and where they can find it and nice and neat. So they need to be respectful of our materials in order to keep using them. I also keep the schedule on the board every day. So we have the same schedule every day, whether they do math with a friend, math by myself, or math with a teacher, whatever order they do it in, all five days of the week are exactly the same, but I still have it posted on the board. We have those students that are at the nurse and they come in and they're like, well, where am I supposed to go again? And it's just very helpful for all students to be able to see, okay, that's the order I go in. Also, I switch students between groups very fluidly when I see how they're performing or if we take a quiz and I see they're doing really well or they need a little more help. Like we move math groups often and they know that that's in their best interest and to help them get the best instruction possible. So it's helpful to have the centers up on the board. You can put it up on your smart board or I usually have it printed out up on the blackboard in the back of my room. And it just shows them where they need to go so they can look at it for a quick reference whenever they need to. And also, during math time, we had to use some problem solving circles. That's another responsive classroom strategy that I use that for some reason during math centers, sometimes Students get really excited and really into it, and they have a little too much energy, or I don't know what it is about math centers that brings out their excitement. And what we do, if, the, we, if I feel like the whole class is struggling to stay focused or struggling to stay quiet, I pull them to the carpet and we have a problem solving circle, and I ask them if they're being part of the problem or part of the solution, and we talk about how we can fix it because students know that we need math centers to run appropriately in order to do them. They know it's a privilege to be able to play these games with their friends, to have their teacher time. They love coming back to the table for teacher time. And to be able to do all these activities, it's a fun way to do math, but we need to work together to make sure our classroom is functioning correctly. So just having those quick few minute conversations on the rug, talking about how we can fix what's going on and what we can do, and if there's anything I can do to help support them and if there's a problem going on I don't know about. It's just a quick way to help make sure that we're all talking and we're all on the same page to make sure that we want math centers to run well and we're helping them run well. And it really helps students take ownership of that time of the day, fostering that independence for them while they're working in their stations. Okay, so my last tip is for math with a friend, you can either assign partners or let them pick partners. So it depends on the personality of your classroom. If you feel like they're able to handle picking partners, if that's a privilege that they're able to do, if you would rather assign them sometimes. That's something I've done is that while they're at the math with the teacher, the students are all on the same level. But then at the other two stations, math by myself, math with a friend, they're mixed abilities. So then if you want, you could assign partners and have a higher level student with a lower level student working on a game together and helping them learn from each other. So it all depends on what you want it to look like. Do you want those partners to be same level partners? Do you want them to be mixed level partners? So think about that when you're making your groups. That makes the schedule a little more complicated to have those groups mixed, but it's still able to be done. So if you need any help with that, I'm happy to help figure out scheduling too. I know that can be a little complicated, but I'm here to help you if you need it. I'm gonna put some links in the description to other math videos and blogs that I have if you want to read about them. If you want to reach out to me, I'm happy to help you and answer any questions and let me know what I can do. Thank you for stopping by.